very common thing yeah. is to put a saw blade through your finger. Right. Because when you're a novice, as you yes. cut down, right. it breaks and sticks. I haven't done it for a few Could years. Did that take your finger off that thing? Just, uh, no, it, it just sticks, bone, just right. sticks into you. Oh, okay, right. And then you have to pull out the barbs, like you do with a fishing hook. Oh, goodness, right. So, right. but luckily I, I haven't done it. Hopefully we'll avoid a trip to a &E. uh, Yeah. This diamonds engagement ring retails for about £23,000. Stephen Barnard, the head jeweller at 77 Diamonds and London's Mayfair, is about to show me how to make one just like it. Barnard's been making jewellery with precious stones like this for 50 years, but still feels like he's learning something new every day. So it's with some trepidation that I ask him how he feels about letting a rank amateur like me loosen his workshop. I'm happy to let you do a few things. We've got plenty of plasters and <laughs> I'm sure you'll cut your fingers, but yeah, I'm willing to let you have a go. My confidence that we can get through the afternoon without a trip to hospital, just about intact, we begin. The first step is the scary bit with the saw, cutting the shank of the ring to size. Barnard and his apprentice of 10 years, Sam Devoyle, sit alongside three other craftsmen in this cramped workshop their fingers black with dirt and calloused after years spent working with these rugged tools. Most of the techniques used here have been around for well over a century, but they've embraced so many technology too, namely this laser machine, which was bought to help cope with the rising demand for platinum. With a laser machine it's clean and it melts platinum at a high temperature without burning your hands and it's very efficient. While I'm relieved the laser machine will prevent me from burning my hands, I don't feel like I make the best start when I squint into its viewfinder and my eyes struggle to focus. I'm told it can take a few days for your eyes to adjust, so we move on to the oxygen gun. I'm warned again to proceed with caution. The gun fires heat at solder, which is then applied to the shank to weld it firmly together. The ring turns white hot in the process, at which point protective eye gear is recommended to stop the glowing melt damaging the eyes. Excess solder is then removed with a file before the ring is hammered flat on a block which Barnard made from a piece That's of tree it. trunk from his garden. A wooden block helps absorb the noise from the hammering, preventing it from being heard by the diners in the restaurant directly below us. After the welding, I quickly clean the ring with a pendant motor. This is an instrument that wouldn't look or sound out of place next to a dentist chair. The modern consumer favours diamond size and quality over an intricate ring design. But in the past, Barnard would have been commissioned to spend several days crafting a single elaborate piece. We were making things for the royal family as well as Arab royal families. And they loved large elaborate necklaces and um, so it was, yeah, it was a wonderful time. I worked on Elizabeth Taylor's pear shape, the Burton diamond, but only when she was selling it, I'll never forget seeing it in my hand. It was 37 carats, I think, sitting in your palm like this. Um, but I loved making things for the Arabs and Lady Di had a couple of necklaces made. The more modest piece of jewellery we're working on today is later filed and buffed by hand. This takes considerable effort and I struggle to get it uniformly flat. Until that is, it's pointed out to me that I haven't been holding the ring level. Finally, the diamonds are mounted, a process I'm more than happy to leave to the professionals. A drill is used to manipulate the claws so the stone can fit. Then a tool called a pusher sets the main diamond and the smaller surrounding stones that sit on the shank. A final polishing and our ring's ready to go. Over the five decades that Barnard's been in the business, there's been a decline in jewellery making in the UK. Trade is shrinking and if you look at our workshop as a quality workshop, I'd say I only know two or three others within London where there used to be numerous amounts. Of people import some cheap jewellery, it does make it sad, and, but I think say we don't make many products in the UK anymore. The jewellery trade is just uh, the same as all other trades, I think. I think uh, to work at the bench as I do, you have to get a joy out of making something. It may take you eight, ten hours. Not everybody can do that. There's lots of people who can make things with their hands, but to rigidly sit there every day and produce things and get pleasure out of it, that's difficult. The level of craftsmanship in this workshop is striking and it's been quite something to witness skills that have been honed over decades. Getting up close and personal with diamonds has been exhilarating but I don't think I'm quite ready to give up my day job just yet. 